I could never understand how I went faced with affection. A girl could say no thank you, or I might fall. A man with outstretched hand is saying, What a connection we have got. But it's My baby don't care for clothes My baby don't care for shows Baby just cares for me Baby don't go for furs and laces Baby don't care for lots of high tones my baby don't care for rings or other expensive things. She's as sensible as can be. My baby don't care who knows it. My baby, she just cares. Don't care for shows Baby just cares For me My baby don't go for All those Furs and laces My baby don't care For lots of high tone places My baby don't care of all rings Her other expensive things She's as sensible as can be Now, my baby don't care Who happens to know it My baby just cares for my baby just cares for My baby just cares for me
Seems like dreams like I've always had Could be, should be making me glad Why am I blue? It's up to you to explain I'm thinking that maybe, baby I'll go away Maybe someday you will come and say It's you that I need And you'll be pleading in vain It had to be It had to be you I wandered around And I finally found Somebody who Could make me be true Just to be sad Thinking of you Some others I've seen They might never be me Might never be cross or try to be boss, but they'll never do. For nobody else gave me that thrill for all your faults. I love you still It had to be you Wonderful you It had to be you Gave me that thrill for all 
Just flash them eyes and I'll hit the floor. It had to be wonderful you. It had to be you. Shout, don't you leave a one syllable out. Tell me again how that you love me too. Oh, was I blind? I missed it somehow. But at least you've mentioned it now. Tell me again that you love me too. Can't believe uh, I miss the signs, miss all the looks, all your designs, baby. I guess that I'm a little slow on the uptake, but the reattake come to my arms. Uh, let's be a team. We're up on other a cusp of a dream. Uh, just tell me again uh, that you love me too. Don't you leave one syllable out just to tell me again that you love me too? Oh, was I blind? I missed it somehow. 
but at least you've mentioned it now. Tell me again that you look for me, you do. Hey, now I can't believe I missed the signs, missed all the looks, all your designs, baby. I guess that I'm a little slow on the uptake, but on the reattake to come to these arms, let's be a team. We're upon the cusp of a dream. Just to tell me again, tell me again, tell me again, how that do you love me too? No, I'll never understand Why she treated me that way I feel so lost The world No, I'll never understand Why she played a cruel game Am I no good? Was I to blame? Every time she wrongs me Every time she hurts me Seems I cry for million tears Every time she wounds me All it does is fan the flames Deep down in it And there's still a bitter pill Though she's all gone I love her still She wrongs me Every time she hurts me Seems I cry familiar tears Every 
time she wounds me All it does is fan the flames Deep down in the hair No, I'll never And there's still a bitter pill Though she's all gone I love her I could never understand how when faced with affection A girl could say no thank you, I might fall A man with outstretched hand is saying What a connection we have got But it's not at all, at least according to her She'll say she likes him She more than likes him But that's the problem He's just too close And she hopes he'll understand That it is brand of affection It isn't what she wants She might fall And that's the way it is and this world it just isn't fair And as the French say C'est la vie, c'est la guerre
I could never understand how when faced with affection, a girl could say no thank you, I might fall. A man with outstretched hand saying what? A connection we have got But it's not at all At least according to her Now, she gonna say she likes him In fact, she more than likes him But that's the problem He's just too close And she hopes he'll understand That his brand of affection Well, it is not what she wants Cause she might fall And that's the way it is This world just isn't fair And as the French say Say la vie, say la guerre Say la vie Say la Hi, I'm Sam Shockley with Vegas Beyond the Strip, and today I have part of our original Rainmaker band. This is the Debari Davis Project. I'm going to talk about the Debari Davis Project, but first I have to tell you that I'm drawing back the curtain on the stars here in Vegas. This one always interviews all of the jazz specials, the <laughs> jazz greats, and now I'm interviewing them. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is Dubari. This is Davis. And how'd you get the project in your name? The project? Well, we used to live in the projects a long time ago. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've moved on since then. No, first I want to know where are you born? I'm, you're going to be the second reveal, okay. and I'm going to be so excited. Okay. I was, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Um, in the late 50s, and then uh, I moved here after, right after high school for a while, and then went back to New York for 17 years, around 1999 or so, and came back five years ago. Now, I understand your father was in the business? Yeah, my father was a, a, a bass player, like Jeff, and sang with his, uh, his brother and his cousin. They were called the Barry Trio, and the whole family are pretty much musicians, my cousins, and so I was born into a family of that kind of... And you're all Irish, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, nah, no. <laughs> now, Mr. Davis, where yes, are you from? Well, I was born in Germany. My father was in the service, so I'm from a military family. So I lived everywhere, and I grew up in Germany in the '60s. And uh, uh, but basically, uh, the family originally was from Illinois. So I guess I'm from Illinois. Illinois. Although I didn't spend much time there. What part of Illinois? Springfield, mid-state. Interesting. Yeah. I'm from Illinois, Chicago. All right. <laughs> anyway, now, you were at one time a professor. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving you an opportunity sort of. to talk because once this yeah. starts, That's, I know it's, uh, hey, it's, it, it's going to be oh, good. <laughs> no, I taught, <laughs> the Mike Dabari Show. I taught for about 10 years at English. I taught English for about 10 years at UNLV, and I taught in a business college uh, in Indianapolis a long time ago. And I did a little teaching in the secondary school system, but not too much. Well, I have to tell you, he is a bass player par excellence. I mean, today we had a session that was so swinging. Mm. And I mean, the, the drums are what, what drive the train here. But I, someday you're going to do a bass and singer alone song mm -hmm. that well, is cool i think we've done that here already maybe somewhere down the line we did yeah right? somewhere yeah. down the line yeah. we did that. well i better watch our but channel anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll do it again <laughs> okay just for me that'd be great okay. now tell me how did the duberry davis 
project start? Go ahead, Jeff, take it. All right. Well, I, I came to town in 1980 and uh, by accident. I was with a little show that started in Reno and ended up here. And we met at a friend's house uh, uh, somewhere along the way in early 1980. And uh, we started playing at that time and really haven't stopped. So, so we, uh, the band uh, kept going through different evolutions and different iterations. And uh, recently, Mike came back to town. He was gone for about a few years to back to New York. Came back to town, we started playing again, did some recording, put the band together. And for lack of uh, a, a, a greater imagination, we came up with the name DeBerry Davis Project. I think it's very sexy. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. I haven't heard that name used well, before. Well, I mean, before. you know, some people do the orange pickle or something, but this is the oh. DeBerry orange Davis pickle. Orange Project. Wow. Something. How, how sophisticated. <laughs> anyway. It's kind of sophisticated, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I haven't thought of it that way. Now, but. do you typically have other musicians with you? Well, we have whoever we can get. <laughs> no, that's, that's not true. We, our, our, you, our regular band is Dave Siegel on keyboards and uh, Dave Stamba on sax. They're busy right now, so we're using other people. Who are, by the way, just Who great Just as great. Oh, yeah. just as great. absolutely. We've if had both better. of them here and love them to death. Right. I like the style of Dave Stanba's sax. There's no better. Yeah. Well, Steve Johnson's pretty close. Anyway, <laughs> tell me... Tell me all you have to tell me about the DeBerry Davis project. Wow, man, it's, we've been together a long time. And uh, like Jeff said back in the way early 80s, maybe even like January, beginning of the year, uh, late 79, we had been putting a band together, uh, Mark Swigert, myself, and Cocho. And uh, we were looking for a bass player. Jeff had just came to town. And so somebody had Alex Darmstadt, I think it was, or D. Gauze. Like it could have been D. Gauze, actually, mm -hmm. that suggested that Jeff come and, you know, come hang out with us a little bit. And so there were a slew of bass players that had come in. And uh, Jeff was the last one to come in. And, uh, I, you know, of course, being the drummer, I was able to choose the bass player that I thought would be best for us. And it was definitely Jeff. And, uh, and we've been together ever since, uh, it's like for over 42 years now. It's oh, about, my God. You know, we've been back to New wow. York together. We played the Waldorf together. We played with just about everybody. And, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I just don't think I would really want to play with anybody else because we have like a unit that, uh, you know, bass and drums is, a, is the, 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 the focal of everything. It drives yeah. the whole thing. And so it just, it's so easy to play with Jeff, you know, and, uh, and so it's, it's, been a, it's been a unit for 42 years. Now, I know that you played at the Encore with our guest last time, yeah. Michael Monge. Michael Monge, that's right. What's so funny? Oh, no, no, I was thinking of something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, excuse me, no. I was thinking of the encore because I had come in to help out once. I was just in trouble. Forget it. No, forget it. Okay. Sorry. Well, now, have you played on the strip with famous people? Oh, yeah. Well, tell us about it. Go ahead, Jeff. You could go. Start. Oh, okay. I've Yeah, I've played all the hotels. I've played all the lounges. I've played with people like uh, Joe Williams, uh, wow. uh, Bernadette Peters, Robert Goulet, wow. Al Martino, you know, Vic Damone, all kinds of people over the years. I'm oh sure. my God. You know, and it's great. It's great. It, it's a great experience, but this is much more fun. This is what, what I would prefer to do, this type of thing. Well, I understand yeah. that you practice every day. Uh, not so much anymore, but yeah, I do. I try, I try to play every well, day. Well, I think it's very romantic when you, you play at home to your girl, your loved one. She, she Well, I'm lucky because she, ha she enjoys hearing it, I think. <laughs> at least that's what she tells me. <laughs> Tell me, do you practice at home? No, I'm not a, I'm not a big <laughs> practicer. I, I grew up just playing drums with, with music, and so... Well, even if I played for eight hours, I never really honed in on practicing anything. I just learned how to play the music, you know. That's well, you're intuitive. Yeah, everything, you know, I don't, I don't practice. If I practice, I really wouldn't even know how to practice. I don't know how to do it. I've been meaning to talk to you about it. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> tell Maybe me, you can help out with Tell me, a, uh, look at me. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Tell me who, who you've played with. I know you've played with Billy Ray Charles. That's kind of off the strip. 
uh, get into some of the exciting moments in your career. Well, when I was younger, like, you know, when I was 14, I started playing drums with my, my uncles and my, and my dad. And so during that time, uh, they were like the top band in New York. So we had everybody coming in through there, sitting in with our band. And a lot of gigs had come through that. You know, a lot of, being so young, a lot of the older guys wanted to, you know, kind of help out and, and show me things. So I got to play with, well, a little bit with Hank Jones and Richard Davis. Uh, sitting in with them, they used to come across the street where I played in Manhattan at a place called Delfino's. They would play at a place called Beefsteak Charlie's. So they, they, they wanted to show me to, how to use brushes more. I would go and play with them and uh, Dakota Stanton. I got to play with her uh, a bunch. Uh, Jack Jones, I did some things with him. Um, but you know, when they ask me like who I play with, I, there's a lot of those kind of people, but I really I really feel more proud about playing with the great, the greatest musicians that I got to play with, like Jeff and um, and like a Mike Frost, a friend of mine, and and and, and the band. These and guys. Patrick Hogan. Patrick is fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, he is and, our child genius here in Las Vegas. He goes to UNLV, and uh, I mean he's in a graduate program. He's 24 years old, but he plays at the Bellagio. I mean, if that gives you any indication indication of what a talent he is. He is a jazz musician. And well, these guys just seem to just erupt when he plays. It, yeah, he's, he's, he's an incredible player. You know, yeah. we, we met him. Matter of fact, I, I came in to see you at the dispensary. I just got gotten back in town. You were playing, and I think he had, he had uh, filled in for Uli that night. Mm -hmm. And um, right. uh, what was Dave Lope was there, and I was yeah, leaving. Dave I had to sit in. He says, could you sit around and sit in with him? And I says, well, you know, Dave, I'm kind of tired. I'm, he goes, you got you to hear this kid. And so um, that was the first time I heard him, and he was just incredible. We, you know, we, Jeff and I looked at each other, and we were just like, wow, this kid can swing. And he's, uh, he's a great player. I don't think, you know, that the Bellagio is is going to make make a break him, but he's way beyond all mm -hmm. of that stuff. Yeah, but you know, as <laughs> yeah. I'm pulling back the curtain, people like to hear about things that they know about, rooms that they know about, and the Mayfair room is, is a very expensive place, but it has this great show, people swinging from the ceiling, <laughs> the stage goes up, the stage goes down. Wow. It's always nice to hear about famous people that you've worked with. Oh, okay. Very good. But you've brought some famous people here to us. Well, yeah. Well, we brought we brought Dave and uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Debbie. I mean, these are these to be quite honest with you, really, you know, I, it sounds like a joke, but these are the, the people that, that are in this community that are, are just the and real stars. And we are forever grateful. Oh. The well. fact that that Donnie has moved so much of his equipment in here. Oh, I'd like to talk to you about that. We think that he <laughs> may stay. <laughs> Where's his bed? Did it come in yet? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, we played with Donnie. Donnie was our sound man back in 1988. We were playing at a, like, the top disco in town, mm. playing jazz. We used to have a big band, Jeff and I. We were doing like Weather Report stuff, right, Jeff, and all the yeah. originals. And we needed a sound man, and uh, so Donnie came and did it, and we we were very, very rehearsed and a very, like, one of the top bands in the country at the time, and, like, we were very worried about who the sound guy was going to be. And and who walks in? Donnie went back with his hair back then and was like, you know, <laughs> throw it. and he just, he just killed us. I mean, I always said that if... If all the lights went out in Vegas and there was no electricity, Donnie will figure out how to get you back up and running, man. Can, <laughs> yeah, so. Well, tell me now. I understand that you are recording now. Tell me about that. We just finished a, uh, a CD project. Uh, it doesn't have a name yet. We're right now. It's called 2022. We did. We recorded ten tunes, four originals with uh, Dave Stambaugh and uh, and uh, Dave Siegel. We had some vocals too. Right? And some vocals and uh, Dave DaCosta. And uh, it came out great. We just finished uh, mixing it and it's going to come out soon. So we're really proud of that. That's, I think that's our best playing to date. Really? Yeah. 
Well, that's that's yeah, pretty good because you are you are a great Facebooker and you put historical stuff on, and I tell you, it is gorgeous. It is something. It has great reaction too. Well, you know, we've been at it a long time, and we've really, I have to say, that we really cared about the music and what that stands for, and. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I, anything that we do, I'm very proud of. You know, it's, it's good music. Well, I have to say, you just have to smile a little bit more. <laughs> My mom always told me that. I could never figure it out. I'm Sam Shockley, and this is Vegas Beyond the Strip with the DeBerry Davis Project. And I'm so thrilled that you stopped by to say hello to me. We love you. We love you, Sam. And, and, and we love Patrick. You and guys Patrick have too. been incredible. And uh, thank God for you being here. Thank you. Absolutely.